Tears fall like rain as I witness the pain of generations. My heart is like rivers, clotting and clogging and throbbing in the aftermath of so much bad blood, so much bloodshed, so many lives led to ruin for the sake of a buck. It's hard to feel stuck, and it hurts to bleed so much. What is one thing you really wish you could do differently in your life right now? Got something in mind? What's the issue? Do you not have enough time, energy, or resources to make it happen? It might be because you're living in a structural environment that takes all of your time, energy, and resources. Even something as important as how you feed your children, or how you care for your own body, or how you feel at home, it's all shaped by this structure. Here in America, if you're embedded in mainstream society, which was established here by colonizers some hundreds of years ago, and is now designed for the profit of corporate interests rather than the flourishing of human lives, chances are high that you're living in a state of relative disconnection from your actual earthly habitat and your own earthly body. You're working long hours in one toxic building to pay for housing in another toxic building, buying groceries with minimal nutrition, staring at a small screen, a big screen, driving all over town, trying to be healthy and calm, but mostly feeling sick and stressed. Here in America, we're seeing rates of chronic disease in children at 54%, according to the CDC, free COVID. Various forms of addiction, anxiety, and depression have taken over most teenagers. Approximately 70% of adults are on prescription medication. We've also decimated about 70% of the world's topsoil where food grows, which, according to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, means we have about 60 harvests Mainstream strategies for building value in society are clearly not working. That said, I do believe we're all doing our best to raise bright and healthy children 
And we do want the best for ourselves and each other. But first, the way we define success needs to be divorced from current standards. To illustrate my point, I'll give you a snapshot from my own family. I grew up in a seemingly successful middle class American household. Dad at work, mom at home with three kids, food on the table, the usual pets, emphasis on getting good grades at school, which I did. But something wasn't working, and it set in early. By middle school, I was smoking and drinking and cutting and burning myself and sneaking around at night. My parents responded with ADHD medication and written behavior contracts that I was supposed to sign, outlining rules, expectations, and consequences. Fast forward to age 18. My mother had been hospitalized for a mental breakdown, and I had been kicked out of my house for breaking curfew. I walked down the street with a duffel bag and into the world, learning to navigate unknown terrain forming strategic alliances, and leveraging my assets, which I did. I went on to live through eating disorders, years of partying and drugs, the club scene, the car accident, etc. I accidentally got pregnant at the age of 22, but immediately cleaned up and settled down. Babies are roots, after all. And I grew a great interest in the healing arts, and relationship, and the power of connection, I went back to school, finished my degree in creative writing, helped start an integrated student wellness center on the campus of UCSD, and got into the local music scene, where I met someone who felt very special to me. Twelve years and two more kids later, I had recreated my mother's initial experience. Home alone with a baby, a toddler, and a child, while my partner went to work. Very much focused on health and wellness, but struggling to balance all of our different needs and developmental stages without the support of a village or a tribe or any real-time community, all of which get sidelined in pursuit of the American dream and its isolating definitions of stability. By the way, when physician and researcher Dr. Gabor Mate studied the relationship between stress and breast cancer, he found that stress alone does not increase the risk of cancer but stress plus isolation increases the risk by a factor of nine. Eventually I called it quits and set up a household with my best friend and her two kids. We combined children and forces and were on the brink of starting a nature preschool in our backyard. Then came COVID. Now that was the systemic interruption that really cut me a break. I followed my gut and left for the hills landing with my daughters on a remote family farm in Northern California. I started showering in the open air, tending a garden, eating from the garden, feeding chickens and goats and learning about the plants around me. I felt a strength and a clarity and aliveness beyond anything I had known as an adult. And I realized then that wellness is never separate from the environment in which we're living. About a year later, differences with my co-parent forced a move back to San Diego, but I was determined to stay wild and weave a new way of being in the city. First, I worked with two of my best friends to launch Good Shepherds Regenerative Land Management, now with more than 350 goats and sheep grazing around the county for fire abatement and soil health. We also have a micro dairy on the horizon. The shepherds live in mobile housing on the lands they're tending. It's a beautiful example of a lifestyle that generates more than it consumes. Plus the people in the neighborhoods we serve absolutely love our work and they come out in droves every time we host a community event. For example, in the fall, we invite people to bring their post holiday pumpkins to throw to the herd instead of sending them to rot in the landfill. Next, I launched Little Shepherd's Nature Lab, providing educational enrichment to youth with a 26-foot school bus turned classroom on wheels named Rover. Our staff consists of parents, educators, farmers, gardeners, artists, builders. We pop up with live music and theater performances on our outdoor stage. 
hands-on workshops, summer camps, always with an emphasis on authentic self-expression, teamwork, and life skill building through direct action. Of course, we take the kids to meet the shepherds and work with the animals on the job sites too. And studies do show that children perform better mentally, physically, socially, and emotionally with more time in nature. And I have seen every student in our program blossom in their own unique way. Finally, there's Clay Farm on the Taos Volcanic Plateau in New Mexico, where a building project aims to empower local residents to make brick houses out of compressed earth harvested on location. In a mosaic, many parts make a whole. Not one narrative, not one revenue stream, not one supply chain, not one household, not one person. Little Shepherds, Good Shepherds, and Play Farm form a triangle, an assemblage, a community-based, creative way to meet basic needs, particularly the big three, food, housing, and education. After all, Dependence in any of these areas is a primary means by which toxic structures are held in place. Because how will I give my children any option for anything different in the future if I don't build outside the box now? How will any of us give anything different to our children if not for the people who are willing to do things differently? Winston Churchill defined success as the ability to move from one failure to the next with no loss of enthusiasm. For myself, I would rather fail trying to run a new play than succeed at keeping a dead ball in the air. Fortunately, the projects I'm working on continue to grow and thrive, and I get to grow and heal right alongside them. If you want to change your life, Forget about all the people trying to sell you their system for changing lives. And just keep rooting around until you find something that deeply energizes you while serving real human needs. And I'll give you a hint. It involves your body in connection with itself, others, and the earth. And do that thing on a regular basis until the energy in your own being rises up to your head and starts telling you how to fly free of your cages and create the evolving, dynamic, mosaic, the moving art that is you.
having the time of my life until death. Do I? Start again. And so by the power invested in me, guiding and directing and protecting me, leading me to this moment and the beauty of home, I pronounce myself whole.